everybody. Welcome back to Odd and Untold, the podcast where we talk about all things strange and spooky. And this is episode 37. And I'm probably going to stop mentioning the episode numbers after a while. Uh, I'm starting to lose track myself, and we're just getting up there in numbers. But uh, this week, I want to talk about uh, some photos I've taken over the years on paranormal investigations that are a little bit weird. And I'm going to talk about why I want to get into that. But one of them is going to be at the conference house, which is a historic house on Staten Island. And the other one was taken at my old apartment in Brooklyn. So I'll get into those stories in a bit. But first, I just wanted to do a little bit of a disclaimer for my audience. Uh, we had done some shows recently, uh, one show about the Sasquatch Chronicles controversy and the story that Wes Germer told. And uh, the last show that we did, which was talking about paranormal belief. And both of those shows kind of stirred up some strong feelings in people. We got some some really good comments but we also got a lot of really nasty comments and i can understand people being passionate about the paranormal and wanting their opinions to be heard and disagreements i mean nobody knows what the paranormal is we all have our beliefs as we discussed last week or our opinions or whatever you want to call them uh we're going to disagree uh people tend to disagree in this field what is a ghost what is a ufo what is bigfoot we all have our opinions. Is Bigfoot an undiscovered ape or is it a, a being from another dimension that jumps through portals? Are UFOs from outer space and other worlds and alien technology or are they just military craft or are they also interdimensional? What are ghosts? Are they the, the spirits of the deceased? Are they just energy? Are they something preternatural that we don't understand yet? Everyone has their opinions. We understand that we're going to disagree. Not everyone's going to agree across the board about what these things are, if these things exist, etc. cetera. Uh, some of the comments we got were really rude, were really, uh, some were threatening, some were homophobic, some were transphobic. I don't even know where that was coming from. Uh, we got called millennials, which is kind of funny because I'm pushing 50, Scott's pushing <laughs> mid 50s, Josh is, is getting up there in the mid 40s. Um, so to call us millennials or, or our generation, uh, seemed a little bit weird. I, so I had to delete some comments because some of them were just downright disrespectful, threatening, insulting, poorly spelled. I mean, if you're going to come at me, at least spell things like your, right? You, Y O U R. It, it's not that hard to get the proper form of your down. So just if you want to insult me, do it grammatically correctly and spell things correctly. Uh, so just, again, it doesn't really bother me. I understand this is the internet and we're going to have trolls and um, I'm not new to the internet. Uh, I ran my blog for over 10 years and again, we did it with sort of tongue in cheek humor and some people would be offended. They didn't understand that we were just kind of laughing at them but also at ourselves as paranormal investigators as people who are into something that is kind of a goofy topic so all i would ask is that please if you're going to comment if you want to leave a review if you want to leave a comment if you want to say something by all means just disagree with us but do it respectfully don't insult myself don't insult my guests don't threaten us uh your comment's going to get deleted no one's going to see it so it's pointless anyway uh, I, I do want to give props to some people who did kind of come at us. They We could tell they were angry, and I kind of responded to them respectfully and just sort of explained ourselves and said, look, you know, we're not here to, to disrespect anybody. We're not here to call anybody names or, you know, we're here to analyze things. We're here to discuss things and all sides of things. And when I explain myself, again, I'm going to give props to them because many of them did come back and say, well, thank you for explaining yourself. Thank you for clarifying. So to those people, you know, thank you for, you know, I understand you're passionate and you may have been angry and maybe your initial comment was an anger, but I do appreciate you coming back and sort of saying thank you for clarifying um, and that you'll keep listening or, you know, whatever. Uh, that's what we want to foster here is just discussion. And again, you don't have to agree with us. Uh, Josh and Scott and myself and John and a lot of people I've had on the show, we don't always all agree on things each other, you know, with each other. We're all friends. So it, it just goes to show that you can disagree on things and still uh, enjoy the topic and still have uh, calm 
rational discussions, respectful discussions, and just say, this is what I believe, or this is my opinion, and that's your opinion, and we can agree to disagree without resorting to calling names. But I'm not going to tolerate uh, homophobia or transphobia or threats or any sort of insults to my guests that uh, are hateful. Again, you disagree with us, you can disagree with us. There's no reason to call names. You know, we're all adults here. So just wanted to say that and get that out of the way before we move on to the fun stuff. So uh, anybody who's been along with us, thank you for sticking around. Um, Lori and Christy and um, we're getting new subscribers all the time. So far from getting your name, I'm sorry, but thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and coming along on this journey with us. For those of you who aren't, you know, due to one episode or because we said something you didn't like or agree with, or, you know, we dare to insult somebody that you think is infallible and, and beyond question, I'm sorry. We're, we're all open to scrutiny. Uh, any claim, any any piece of evidence, any story should be open to scrutiny. And that is a good segue into what I'm going to present today because I have a couple of photos that I've taken over the years that I can't explain. And I have some ideas of what they might be, but I really wanted to present them and show everybody that, you know, if, if you can explain this, if you have an idea, please feel free to let me know and tell me what you think it is, because I don't know what these are. I have some guesses. I'm sorry, I just dropped something. Um, I have some guesses and I'm going to present them here. I'm going to present a little bit of backstory and my evidence or my photos and whatever I present is not infallible. It is not above scrutiny. So scrutinize, please let me know what you guys think of these photos and what I'm presenting here today. I'm going to, if you're listening on a podcast platform and not watching on YouTube, I'm also going to put these photos on our website. So you can go to odd and untold.com. Just look for episode 37 and I'll have uh, a post there that'll have a link to this video, but it'll also have the photos in there. So if you can't watch YouTube, wherever you're at, but you can get online, you can look at these photos, but they're going to be in this video as well. So um, let's get to that. And I'll uh, present some, just two pictures, but very different places and times and uh, two very different photos. And you'll see what I'm talking about uh, when I get back. All right. So I'm back. I had to get a drink, uh, just some polar seltzer. Cause of course, as soon as I started recording, I got like a little dust in my throat. And now I'm, I can't breathe. So, um, had to get a drink. So I'm going to share my screen here and I'm going to talk about the first photo that we captured. I'm not going to show the photo yet. I just want to talk about where we captured it. So let me share my screen here. I'm just going to pull up the website, uh, for the conference house, which is where the first photo I took was taken. And I'm just going to read off the website here because I don't want to miss any details or get any de details wrong. Uh, the conference house museum's role in shaping of American history. Built by English immigrant Captain Christopher Billup in or around the year 1680, this handsome stately manor was a wheat farm throughout the first century of its existence. An invaluable relic in America's history, the conference house was the site of a 1776 peace conference which attempted to end the Revolutionary War. Edward Rutledge, John Adams, Lord Howe, and Benjamin Franklin were among those in attendance. So... The conference house sits kind of on the southwestern tip of Staten Island. Uh, it overlooks the Arthur Kill River, Lower Raritan Bay, and nearby New Jersey. Uh, so we visit there a lot. It's uh, just very easy to get to for us, quick drive, uh, beautiful park. And the house itself is small, but it's historic. Um, so I'm going to keep reading here. The historical background. The conference house is named in honor and commemoration of the famous Peace Conference of 1776, which was held on September 11th of 1776. Uh, so the Continental Congress representatives of John Adams, future president, uh, Edward Rutledge and Ben Franklin, met with the King's representative, Lord Richard Howe, at Colonel Christopher Billups' home on Staten Island. The British would not consider independence a negotiable term, and the congressional representatives had been authorized only to negotiate terms that included independence. So essentially, Ben Franklin and Adams um, had come here to talk to Lord Howe to negotiate independence, declaration of independence. We wanted our independence. The British said no. So the war went on, and we won. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um 
but Staten Island had been very loyal to the crown. They were very loyal to the king, whereas other parts of New York and New Jersey were uh, fighting for independence. But Staten Island had just a, a very uh, strong loyalty to England. So that's why they had the conference here. And and apparently, from what I've heard, when, when Franklin later said that when he showed up to the conference house... Um, the conference house kind of sits on a hill and it just leads down to the water of Raritan Bay. And I guess Franklin said there was just hundreds of redcoats on the lawn and the hill leading down to the water just to kind of intimidate them. So very interesting. Uh, the Billup House, uh, the conference house, formerly known as the Billup House, is a two-story rubble stone masonry building constructed circa 1680 by Captain Christopher Billup. Uh, so and whenever I take my son here, I always also mention to him that this, this house was built in 1680. Ben Franklin, uh, Adams, and Rutledge, they showed up here in 1776. This house was already almost 100 years old when Ben Franklin visited. So for us to go there, you know, this house is pushing close to, you know, 300 years old. So uh, very all over 300 years old. I'm sorry. My math is not very good. So very cool that this is on Staten Island and the, the house is still there. You can go inside. You can take tours. Um, so I'm just scrolling down here. This is very lengthy. You can go to conferencehouse.org, theconferencehouse.org. I'll put the links in the description below so you can read this. Uh, very lengthy. But Billup uh, was a colonel. Um, he inherited the manor from, from his family. And he was loyal to the British as well. And uh, it says even here that he was captured a few times, I believe, by um, the Americans. So a lot of history at this house. Ben Franklin was there. There's some reports of paranormal activity here. And again, the story I've heard from tour guides has changed. There's stuff online. There's stuff in books. Basically, the story goes that Billup, killed a servant girl in the house um and I, i've heard different reasons this this website here is saying that he killed her for spying on the rebels and he threw her down a flight of stairs that's apparently uh, the basis of that story is what we keep hearing repeated over and over is that billop killed a servant girl in the house by pushing her down the stairs the reasons i've heard many different reasons i've heard that she became pregnant and he wanted to kill her to kill the baby I've heard that she was spying for the rebels. I heard it was just a domestic dispute that they were having an affair and she threatened to tell his wife. So I've heard many different tales. As with many ghost stories, there's usually some kernels of truth to it. There's usually the main framework of the story. And then there's some certain detail that kind of changes from telling to telling. So I don't know, but uh, that's the story that she was killed in the house and that you can sometimes he hear her screaming and, um, Usually in this window right here, so if you're watching along, uh, if you're looking at the house, the front of the house, there's the upstairs right window. Uh, people say that sometimes a candle will be lit or they'll see a light up there when no one's in the house. Uh, and if you look at this photo in the back here, if you can see where my cursor is, there's a little addition there. And that's where the, the current house um, groundskeeper stays. So someone stays there and lives there in this part of the house to just, you know, keep an eye on the place, make sure... Never do wells, don't come in at night and graffiti up the place. Um, but the the main house, you can go in, you can't really go into the rooms. They have gates up and you can kind of, the gate's kind of like a semicircle. So you can sort of step into the room, but there's still a gate there, but you can kind of look around and it's it's great. They have period furniture in there. I think there's only one piece of furniture that is actually from the Billup family that is still in the house. Everything else had been sold off or thrown out over the years. So still very cool it, it's it, if you're in the area if you're in the new york city area and you can get to staten island it's a great little getaway it's it's very historic the tour guides are usually awesome it's cheap i think it's like four dollars to get in or five dollars to get in they don't even usually ask you for that they, they usually just ask for a donation so i usually give them like a 20 a 10 or a 20 just to keep them going uh, I also want to make mention, and it says here too, as a side note, the area was also used as a Lenape Indian burial ground thousands of years before European contact. And they had discovered bodies there years ago. They do a lot of, um, if I can get this map here, if I can move myself over here. There we go. Um, 
So you can see kind of where here's Brooklyn and Manhattan is up here. But this whole thing here is Conference House Park, and, and they had found some bodies while while doing some some digging. And th there's a little museum down there as well by Conference House. And they have arrowheads and pottery and all sorts of things they found by the beach. So very cool um, little nature center that they have in there. Like I said, a little building you can go in and just see some of the artifacts that they've pulled up over the years at the Conference House. Like I said, arrowheads, pottery, tools. And again, they did find bodies there, so they know there was a burial ground there. So a lot of stories have cropped up about the the, the, the conference house. And again, it's it's kind of on this ass end of Staten Island here. There's just, it's very residential here, uh, whereas a lot of Staten Island is commercial. There's a lot of, a lot of malls and, and stores and things like that and, and very busy roads. And Tottenville here, where the conference house is, just at this kind of southwestern tip of Staten Island, uh, it's a big park area. We go in there hiking a lot. It's beautiful, but it is it can be kind of spooky because it's just you're in New York City and it's uh, it's woods. It's this old 300 plus year old house and history, Ben Franklin and a ghost story. So very spooky and ghost stories have uh, cropped up. So I'm just going to switch to this. So this is this is a picture of the conference house that I had taken years ago on one of our visits. And I'll get into the story and the photo in a little bit. Uh, but if you see here, this the upper right window that I'm kind of circling with my cursor, that is where people say they see the candlelight when no one is apparently in the house. So this is actually before I joined a ghost hunting group. But my friend John, who's been on the podcast before, and my wife at the time, Janine, we it was one dreary October Sunday, and we had nothing to do, and we'd never been to the conference house. So we said, hey, let's, you know, let's take a drive. We'll go to the conference house. It's kind of this overcast autumn day. It'll be really cool and spooky. And it was daytime. Uh, but we said, yeah, we'll go take a tour. We'll, you know, walk around the grounds. And so we did. And... We took some photos, and over the course of the day, let me see if I can switch to the next photo here. Let me share my screen again, and I'll show you a photo that we took that day. Now, keep in mind, it was very overcast. Uh, we did not have the flash on because it was daytime. This is just an old digital camera. It wasn't a camera phone. This was a digital camera. But I'm going to share this photo now. And again, it's on the website if you want to check it out. But this is what we caught. And... We don't know what to make of this. It, it, it's very bright. I mean, the way we look at it, <laughs> and we're not saying that this is what it is, but it almost looks like two figures walking. Uh, you almost see like arms at their sides and then feet coming down. Uh, it's just a very odd photo. We didn't have a flash on. Again, there was no sun that day, so we don't know where this light came from. We tried recreating it with like fingers in front of the lens or the camera strap in front of the lens. and nothing we couldn't recreate it we took dozens of pictures that day inside the house outside the house on the grounds down by the beach this is the only photo that came out like this so it's kind of blurry in the background and you have these streaks of light like very bright light and they're they look like they're glowing you can kind of see just this pure white and then you can kind of see a glow kind of coming off them very very odd photo and again i'm not saying this is paranormal i honestly don't believe it is but I'm putting it out there again as an exercise to have people um, scrutinize some of my stuff, scrutinize some of my stories and some of my my photos. Um, so we're really not sure what this is. My best guess is that this uh, is a defect in the camera. It looks like the photo may have been taken accidentally. So we may have been moving. Uh, there is some motion blur in the background here. And... I, it could easily just be something catching the camera and it's a digital camera. So maybe just this is its best interpretation of what it was seeing. I don't know, but it's this weird glowing. It looks like energy. Uh, and I hate orb photos. I hate dust orb photos because uh, they're just little pieces of dust that are illuminated by the flash and they don't have this glow. Usually they just usually look like a little orb of, of something. 
they don't ever have this motion. It's always a, a perfect circle. This I don't know. I have we we you know we catch orbs all the time, so we know to to discount them. This again, I am not saying this is paranormal, but it, it was weird. You know, we saw this. Sorry, just adjusting here. We saw this when you know on our uh, the screen, the preview screen on the camera when we were out there, and again, it was tiny. It's probably like an inch diagonal, and well, we got to look at that when we get home. We don't know what to make of that, and you know, we got home, we looked at it on the computer, and this is what we saw, and it's just a weird photo. And again, I'm opening this up to explanation. If anybody wants to scrutinize me respectfully, uh, let us know what this is. Cause I don't know what the technical term for this would be again, orbs. I know are just dust or, or water particles or insects, pollen. It could be any, any small particulate matter that reflects the flash of a digital camera. And then you get orbs. This one, again, this is during the day. This is outside. There was no flash. There was no sun. Again, it was completely overcast, not dark, but it, there was no sun. There was no sun. It wasn't even like a little bit of sun peeking through the clouds. This was like a very overcast day. Um, so I don't know what would cause something to appear so bright. Again, if the sun were out or if we had a flash, I could kind of understand this, but both of those things were, were absent. So if anyone knows what this might be, please let us know. Again, I'll put links to the Conference House below. It's it's a great trip. A lot, lot of hiking trails in Conference House Park. You can go down to the beach. The house itself, like I said, is very small. The tour would be short. Uh, if you're lucky, they'll let you down in the basement. They have like a, a root cellar down there. And it's very cool. Very cool tour. And uh, I've done it a bunch of times. And if you're lucky, they will tell you some ghost stories. And I've had some, some crazy ghost stories. Um, one tour guide, I think I went with my son and... My father and my brother, one time we went and the tour guide was uh, probably like a late high school, early college kid. And and he was telling us, we, we kind of caught the last tour of the day. So he's like, all right, come on in. And, uh, you know, we we asked him, we say, hey, has anything ever weird ever happened here? And he says, honestly, he says, they don't like us talking about this. He says, but there was one time, I guess in the basement, uh, they have it set up almost like a kitchen most of the time. I knew that they do shows down there sometimes, but they have like a table and chairs and stuff down there. And he had said there was one time he was cleaning up kind of the end of the day. They, they finished their tours at like four o'clock on the weekends. They only do tours on weekends. And he said, he kind of put the tables up upside down on the, on the, on the table to kind of clean up. And he went back downstairs for something and the chairs were all back on the floor. Like something had taken them down. Is it true? I don't know. He could have been pulling our legs. Maybe he just liked to you know, tell ghost stories to people who are interested in that. Um, but most of the tour guides will kind of acknowledge that there are ghost stories there. The last tour I took, uh, she was talking about the candle up in the window, and she said she had actually seen it. And she was she was an older woman, um, but she had said that she you know she'd been doing the tours for a while, and she'd been working at the conference house for a while, and she she mentioned the candle in the window. And she said she had actually experienced it. And she knew there was no one in the house. There was nobody who would have lit the candle. Uh, again, getting into those rooms can be tough. They're, they're gated off. So unless you have a key or you want to hop the fence. But again, it's such a small house. And there's one staircase up or down. Like, you can't really hide out in that house and not be found. And it's it's old and creaky and it's wooden floors. So, um, again, she could have been pulling her legs. But who knows? So... That's my conference house photo. So again, if you have an explanation, if you have thoughts on what it might be or a definitive explanation, if you're a photography expert or, you know, you, you know, digital cameras and you can explain what this is, please let us know. Again, I'm not saying it's paranormal. It's just, I can't explain it. It was weird. It was an anomaly. That's all I'll say. So, okay. So I do have another photo I want to show everybody. And this is another weird one. And it's kind of the polar opposite of what I just showed you. So very interesting. I've mentioned on the show many times about my apartment in Brooklyn, my apartment in Bay Ridge. Uh, John's been on the show. Jake, my son Jake, was on the show a couple weeks back, and he talked about a shadow person in his room. I've mentioned seeing a shadow person in this apartment. John has had some weird experiences in this apartment. So this, uh, the next photo I'm going to show um, was taken in my apartment. This was after my first wife and I had moved out. And my grandparents were away on vacation. They lived in the apartment downstairs. So the whole building was empty. 
And we decided to go in and do a you know quick sort of impromptu paranormal investigation and took a lot of photos, set up some video cameras, some audio recorders. Didn't really catch anything except for this photo. And it's a little weird. And I'm just going to share my screen and show just a, a preview, uh, a before photo, sort of. And then I'll get to the main photo. But here, this is the hallway leading out of, I, I often talk about my apartment. So this is the front small bedroom. So this is the bedroom that Jake was in when he saw his shadow person. There's a doorway right here to the right of this doorway that we're looking at. And that led into the master bedroom. Uh, and that's what used to be the guest bedroom. So if you've listened to John's old episodes and you know the, the guest bedroom, that's where it would have been. So this is that main hallway. And then you can see the door here on the left, this yellowish door. And it's got like this white translucent, like frosted glass here that you can you can kind of see through. You can't see detail through it. You can see shapes. You can see colors. Uh, shadows, things of that nature. So this is one of the photos we took that night, just from the main apartment looking forward to the, you know, through the hallway. Uh, there's a little doorknob here that I'm pointing out with my cursor. That door goes up to the roof. So, and I recently found a video where I did a walkthrough of my entire house while it was empty, and I'll put that up soon just so anyone who's interested. And John and I will probably go on and just talk about uh, all these rooms, and we'll just talk about what uh, store which stories happen there just so any, anybody who wants to kind of revisit those can kind of get a better sense of the layout of this apartment because it, it is a little bit weird uh, but anyway we're taking photos and we had this this photo is there's nothing here you know and on paranormal investigations you take lots of photos because you just never know what's going to show up in them and we've never really had anything show up again we've had dust orbs We've had our breath come out at night. You know, if you're outside at night or even in a very cold building, you take a photo with a flash and your breath is coming out and it illuminates and it looks like this mist. And there are people who think those are ghosts and they're not. It's just your breath. So we, but we take lots of photos and, and aside from like breath or dust orbs, we've never caught anything until this investigation. And then we caught this. So this is the same door. It's a different angle, obviously. Um, and I don't know if you can kind of see in the lower center right here and it looks to be about person sized there's a very dark shape that looks like a shadow figure and i'm gonna i'm gonna move ahead one here just to kind of so i hate red circles i hate red outlines but just if you're watching on youtube uh or if you're on the website and again computers have different uh contrast values but this is just so you can kind of see. You can see it completely blocks out the light reflecting off the edge of the door here. So there's something here. And it aligns with what Jake has seen, what I have seen. Uh, it is in the hallway where John experienced most of what he was hearing, uh, where I've heard a lot of things. So an interesting photo. Again, I'm not saying it's paranormal. We tried debunking it. Some people said, oh, it's your, you know, it's your thumb over the lens. And if that were the case, the, you know, you put a thumb up to the lens, it's going to do that. Uh, it covers up the whole photo. It's gonna, you know, the lens lenses are tiny. Um, admittedly, it does look like the shape of a thumb, but we we did after this investigation. Once we you know reviewed all the photos, we did try using this camera and putting our thumbs over the lens. And again, it was always a fleshy color. I mean, it was a dark fleshy color, but it was like a dark pink. Uh, it was never just this complete black that you see here. And it was always much bigger, you know, putting a finger up against the lens. And even far away from the lens, it looks like a finger. It's going to, you know, this, um, it's illuminated here. So you have light. So if you have your thumb far away from the lens, it's going to be lit up. Uh, it's not going to be that solid black. Uh, so, so this is another interesting photo. And again, it could just be a problem with the camera. None of our other photos had anything like this in it. There's just this one photo that had this figure here. I'm going to go back to the original and zoom in again so everybody can see. Uh, and if I zoom in a lot, again, you can kind of see there's edges of the door here that are lit and then it just stops edge of the door here and then it just stops and you can kind of extrapolate the shape of this thing and the height of this thing it looks like it's almost like five feet tall 
I'm about six foot, so this is maybe five, five and a half. Uh, it's head shaped, uh, <laughs> and it is blocking the light. So this is either a defect with the camera, which we assume it is. Again, we're not saying it's paranormal, but it is creepy in that it aligns with what people have seen there and experienced there. So if this is something that you can explain, if you are a, a, an expert in photography or cameras and can explain what may have caused this on not the first photo in a set in a series or the last photo in a series, but a middle photo in a series of dozens and dozens of pictures, why this black shape would be there. It doesn't seem to be reflecting any light, but it definitely seems to be blocking some light. So again, probably a defect in the camera, but I'm opening this up to criticism. I'm opening this up to scrutiny. If anybody wants to analyze these photos and tell me what they are, I can send you the originals. If you email me and you want the originals, I will send you the originals. Um, these have not been edited. I don't know what they are. I'm not claiming at all that they're paranormal. They're just weird. Uh, again, dust orbs, other things like that, we can very easily just throw out. I don't know what these are. I'm not saying they're paranormal. I'm just saying I have not seen these before in any camera before or since. Uh, the conference house picture was taken probably 2003, 2004. And this one was taken probably in 2006. So years apart, very different places. This is in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Conference house is Staten Island. Uh, conference house was during the day. This was a nighttime investigation. So this was at night. Uh, this probably was a flash because there was no light in this hallway except for this light here, which is obviously turned off. Um, so this was a flash and this thing is not reflecting anything. It's just, it just looks like a shadow figure. So I'm guessing it's not because we are skeptical and I don't like to say that anything that we've captured is definitely paranormal. I don't know, but if, and I've had these on our website for years in various forms, both photos and have never gotten any sort of feedback. So I would welcome feedback if anybody has any ideas. If you think they're ghosts, if you think they're paranormal, if you think we've actually caught something interesting, let us know. If you can explain these through rational means, their their camera defects or their whatever, I mean, things that we haven't even thought of, please let us know because I would love to debunk these and just explain to people what they are. Because if this is something, if this is a camera defect that you know, we can explain, then we can use that to explain other shadow person photos. Uh, and that can help us debunk. And again, debunking helps you get to the truth. The truth is not just blindly accepting that the paranormal exists and that every weird photo you take is a ghost or UFO or Bigfoot hiding in the trees. We want to be able to explain these things. So if you can, I welcome, I welcome the scrutiny. I welcome you telling us what they are. Please just be respectful. No name calling. I'm going to stop sharing this now. Again, these photos are going to be on our website, so please check that out, oddanduntold.com. Again, leave us comments below on our website, on our Facebook, anywhere that you can find us. Let us know. You can email me, jason at oddanduntold.com. I'll put the email address up so that you guys can contact me. Uh, but let's have a discussion, a respectful, sane, <laughs> rational discussion. Um, I'm going to cut the episode a little bit short now because I still have this dust in my throat and I'm having trouble breathing and I'm coughing a lot through this and there's gonna be a lot of edits here. So I apologize. Um, but I did want to share those photos with you guys and just get your thoughts. And again, just reiterate, please, please, please respectful. Just be respectful. We are open to discussion. We're open to conversation. We, we will talk about anything and we will listen to you. We will listen to your side of the story, your point of view. Uh, but let's do it rationally. We all should have respect for each other. We're all on the same team. Ultimately, that's what it is. We're all into the paranormal. We're all into Bigfoot. We're all into UFOs. Whatever the topic is, we share that. So let's not let minor differences get in, the, in, in our way and cause us to become enemies. We're not enemies. We're all on the same team. We're just play different positions, essentially. So let's work together and figure these mysteries out. So again, let me know in the comments below what you think these photos are. Help me debunk them. Let's have a discussion about it. Scrutinize me, please. And uh, until next week, everybody, have a great week. Rock and roll. Move.